Welcome to episode number four of the Let's Build Shadowgate series. Today we're going to uh, continue developing Shadowgate. Right now we have the game able to start and go to a first screen. What we want to be able to do by the end of today is create a mouse click handler that handles clicking activities on the screen and then write some methods that will allow the user to open the front door. Now, we're not really concerned right now about going into the front door and hitting the next corridor, but we do want to make it work so that when you click on the door, uh, the door opens, and then when you click on it again, we're prepared to go into the hallway. So, as with the previous tutorials, this tutorial is going to assume that you've completed number episodes 1, 2, and 3 along with me. So, let's go ahead and head over to Alice and get started writing the front door functionality for Shadowgate. So here we are back in our Alice world, and this is the same world that we ended episode number three with. In episode number three, we built this mouse tracking method, and to get us started here, um, I want to pull both the game start and mouse tracking methods over here. Every time you close down Alice, all the methods you were working on get closed down, so I like to open them up so that I can switch back and forth to them pretty easily. In addition, when you start Alice up again after working on a program, all the variables that you were previously watching aren't watched. So we're going to right click on our three variables, game screen, X and Y, and then we're going to hit play and make sure that everything is working correctly. So my mouse tracking method is working. When I hit space, I go to that first billboard screen and the game screen variable is adjusting correctly. So looks like we're in a good spot here. So let's get started to build building a mouse click handler that will handle the actions when the user clicks anywhere on the screen. So in lesson 18 of the Alice tutorial series on this channel, we talked about making a click handler and how they work. Essentially, we want a method that's going to run whenever the mouse is clicked anywhere on the screen. The click handler itself will handle what was clicked on and what needs to happen, but it's going to be one method that pretty much drives everything the mouse can do in our program. And it can get to be pretty complicated, but we're going to organize it so hopefully it makes sense. So let's go to the world methods and we'll create a new method. And this is going to be our click handler. This method will be run every time the mouse is clicked. So we're going to link this to a new event, create a new event, and use when the mouse is clicked on something. So when the mouse is clicked on anything, regardless of what screen is up or whatever the mouse is, is hovering over at the time, we want this click handler to run. The idea being that a mouse click is just a mouse click. Whether we're on a front door or a hallway or the start screen, a mouse click is always just simply a mouse click. So this method will go through and decipher what screen the user's on, what we think they're doing. It'll take all of that information into account and then determine what the mouse click should do. So we've got this mouse click handler. In the last episode, we also numbered each screen. So if you remember back to running this program, game screen zero represented the start screen. And when we hit space, this front door represented game screen number one. We're going to be using this in conjunction with our click handler so that our program knows what screen is showing when we click the mouse. Now this can get to be a pretty complicated method if we put everything that the mouse can do inside this click handler. This could get to be just hundreds if not thousands of lines of code really quickly. So we're going to create some helper functions to help us better organize our code. It's not a necessity, it's merely an organizational technique that we're going to be using. So we've got this click handler here. We're also going to create a new method and we're going to call this screen one handler. The idea of this method is this method will handle all the things that the user can click on specifically for screen number one. This click handler will go through and direct the program to run the right code. Screen one handler is what's going to handle this front door. Now that we have that, we're going to drag the screen one handler over to our click handler. So make sure that you have your click handler selected. 
and we're going to drag screen one handler over here. So every time that we click the mouse, screen one handler is going to run. Well, of course, I don't want screen one handler to run every single time the mouse is clicked. We might be on screen zero, we might be on screen 50. So I'm going to put a simple if check in here and put true in as a placeholder. And I'm going to say if the game screen equals one, then you can run the screen one handler. If we're not on game screen number one, you can just go ahead and ignore this entire method. Now that we have this kind of infrastructure set up, let's go over and actually write the code into screen one handler that's going to have the door open up. In order to show the door open, we have to have the door open graphic imported into our world. So I'm going to take the screen one door closed uh, graphic and set it is showing property to false. That way it's invisible. And then I'm going to make a new billboard. Go to wherever you saved the images from the graphics pack that you downloaded. And we're going to look for screen one door open. This is essentially the same screen. The main difference being the graphic has the door open instead of closed. So we'll have it turn to face the camera. Then we'll resize it so that it's just approaching the maximum width of the screen. And that looks about right there. And then I'm going to move it up so that that white bar just disappears off the screen. Perfect. And that looks about right for what I want here. So I'm going to click done. Now on the screen, I have the door open graphic showing. Of course, right now that does me no good because there's no way for me to make the game have the screen show. In fact, if we hit play right now, you'll notice there's a little bit of an, a bug or an error. I hit play and I kind of get this ghosting effect here. That's because when I hit play, my door open screen is still on. So back in episode number two, uh, we started building my first method that was going to turn off all the graphics aside from the start screen. So now that we've added a new billboard, let's take screen one door open and set it is showing property to false over a duration of zero seconds. So that when we hit play, the door one open and door one close both disappear. Now, what I'm looking for is when I hit space to enter the game and I get to the screen, I want to be able to click on this door. If I click on the door, I want it to open. So I have to find kind of the coordinates that make up the door. So if you can imagine just drawing a square around this door, that's what we're going for. So I'm going to consider this to be about the top left of where the door could be clicked on. And I'm going to take note of its XY coordinates. So it has a X value of 220 and a Y value of 179. And then I'm going to find the bottom right corner of my click region. And I think that's about right. And that X value is 357 and the Y value is 516. Keep in mind that these numbers are going to be probably different on your screen, so you just want to make sure you're watching the X and Y values yourself and taking note of what the X and Y coordinates for the top left and bottom right are on your particular screen. With that information, we can go back to our click one handler and start building some functionality for a mouse click. So to start this, I'm just going to use a simple if command and as we talked about in lesson number 18 in the Alice tutorial series, you need a series of four checks to do a mouse click region on the screen. So I'm going to set up four placeholders by right clicking on this arrow, selecting logic, and then going to true and. Make sure you're not using or, we want the one that says and. And we're going to do that three times so that our if statement says true and true and true and true. You should have four spots right there. Now we need to check our X and Y coordinates to make sure that the user is indeed clicking on the door itself. So let's go to our world variables and I'm going to check to see if X is greater than and my low X value was 220. So let's use 220 here. So X has to be greater than 220 and less than 357. That was my high X value. So let's select other 357. And now I need to check my Y values. So if I go to Y here, I need to make sure that X is greater 
than 179. And y is less than 516. So that's going to be my if check to see if the door was successfully clicked on. If that doesn't make sense to you, or if that if check looks a little bit complicated, you might want to go check out lesson 18 in the Alice tutorial series for a full explanation on why this right here represents a door click. And you may have noticed that I made a slight error. I wanted to make sure that y was greater than 179, and I inadvertently selected less than 179. So I'm just going to right click on the symbol and change it to greater than. That's kind of a quick way to change these right here, but I need to make sure that it's greater than my lowest y value and less than my highest y value. So at any rate, what we want to do now is attempt to keep this program as organized as possible because it is going to get complicated. So let's add some comments. I'm going to comment the top of my screen one handler and just write in there that this method handles all click activity for screen number one the front door. That way, as I grow this program, I know that screen number one is the front door and that this handler will handle everything that has to do with the front door. In addition, I'm going to add a comment here to this if check and say this if check will run if the front door was successfully clicked on. Again, when you start writing bigger programs, these numbers aren't going to mean a whole lot to you in the future. And if you have, say, 15 clickable objects on the screen, you might not remember what if check goes to each one. So adding this comment will make things probably a little bit easier as your program grows, especially when you put it down for, say, a week or two and then try and come back to it. We're going to test out this little bit of code. And before we do anything game related, I'm just going to use a trick that I like to use with atmosphere color, and I'm going to set the atmosphere color to red or any color other than black. We're going to test this code and see if the atmosphere color changes in the background, and if it does, then I know I can go back, delete this, and just put in the, the functionality that I really want. So let's hit play, start the game, and now when I click anywhere out in the world, you can see nothing is happening, but when I click on the door, the atmosphere color changes to red. That lets me know that this if check is successfully completing whenever I click on the front door. Another thing you may want to check is we can try this here on the front screen, where the front door would be. You can see as I click around the screen here, the atmosphere color isn't changing at all. The reason is the click one handler will only execute if game screen equals one, and while we're on the front screen here, the game screen equals zero. But once I hit space and enter the game, game screen equals one, and now this screen is activated. So now that we know this works, we can go ahead and delete our test code here and actually set the program up to make the front door open. There's a few things that we want to happen if the door is clicked on. And so we're gonna do this in a do together statement. So I've got my do together block here. The first thing is the door that shows, or the screen that shows the door closed, the billboard that shows the closed door should be turned off. So I'm going to set the is showing property of the closed door to false over a duration of zero seconds. And at the same time, the billboard that has the door open should become visible to the player. So select door open and select that is showing property to true over a duration of zero seconds. If this worked correctly, as soon as we click on the closed door, the closed door should disappear and the open door should show up. So we'll hit play, hit space, and when we click on the door, we can see that the door is now open. And now I can continually click on the door, and it's not doing much. Now, in reality, every time I click on the open door, it is doing something. It's just not visible to the user because the door closed is already set to false, and the door open is already set to true. So every time I click on the door, it's simply turning on the open door and turning off the closed door, which is already the way the world is. So that's a simple way for us to add. Now there's a few things we want to happen if the door is clicked on. Because there's more than one thing going on, and I want it to all happen at the same time, I'm going to use a do together block. Now the first thing that has to happen, the screen that shows the door closed needs to disappear. I don't want the user to, be see a, to see a closed door anymore once they've clicked to 
to open that door. So I'm going to set the is showing property of the closed door to false over a duration of zero seconds so that it happens instantaneously. At the same time, I want the door open graphic to show up. I'm going to set the is showing property of the open door to true over a duration of zero seconds. Essentially, the moment the door is clicked on, I want the closed door and the open door to swap visibility. So we hit play, we hit space to enter our game, and when I click on this door, the billboard should swap. You can see that I now have an open door. Now I can continually click on this, and each time I click on it, something is happening, it's just not visible to the user. The, the reason something is happening is I'm still within that open door region that I set earlier in my if check. But every time I click on it, it's taking a billboard that's already off and turning it off again, and a billboard that's already open and turning it on again. For purposes of this demo, it doesn't really matter, but as we continue writing this game, we are going to write some checks to make sure that you can only click on the door once. But that's going to wrap up episode number four, so let's go ahead and file Save World As, and I'm going to put this in my Alice directory, and we're going to call this episode number four. This is where we'll pick up. Now, like I said, we're, we're far from done. We still need to add some additional checks. We need to be able to go into the hallway. We need to be able to click on the open door and now change screens into the hallway. So there's still a ton of stuff to do for our point and click adventure game to be at all even resembling a game. But as you walk away from this tutorial, you should have a game with multiple billboards. And when you click on the front door, you should be able to see it open. We'll worry about the functionality and what comes after the door is opened during the next episode. As always, thank you so much for your support of the Let's Build Shadowgate series as well as the Alice tutorial series. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comments and I will help you out any way that I can. Until next time, thanks a lot and have a great day.